Carolyn and me, <clears throat> excuse me, Lawrence Schiller joins us this morning. It's so nice to see you. Thank Thanks you very much. For Tell me, me the story behind the pool shots, because in some ways the shots are unbelievable. But the story well, is heartbreaking, too. Well, you see, I had met her originally in 1960 when I was 23. Photographed her for Look Magazine, but then Paris Match, the French magazine, asked me to photograph her in 1962. I had a, a little more chutzpah behind me at that time, <laughs> a little more experience, as Jeffrey knows I can be a little bit he has business. Plenty of yeah. right. <laughs> no, no shortage. And but what I didn't realize is that she was fighting so many demons in her life. She was on the set of Something's Got to Give. A movie right? called Something's Got to Give. But she was being she was late every single day. She couldn't sleep at night, and she was costing the studio millions of dollars. So she decided to use a weapon against the studio, and that was to show that she can garnish more publicity than Elizabeth Taylor could who was working for the same studio, being paid a million dollars. She was only getting 100000 So she resorted to the only weapon she had left was her body. Did and it one work? day she said, what would happen if I jumped in the swimming pool with the bathing suit on, as the script says, but come out with nothing on? And her press agent turned to her and said, you're not kidding. You know, you're just kidding. You know, what is this all about? And she says, no, I think I might just do it. And that's what she did seven Wait. days later. How would you describe, what, what was the cause of her insecurity? When, as a woman, when I look at her photos, I see her sex appeal. She's confident. She's beautiful. She's everything that a woman should be in these right. photos. What caused that insecurity that ultimately led her to take her life? Well, look, I wasn't with her in her private moments. I didn't walk the beach with her. I wasn't with her at 2 o'clock in the morning when she wakes up. So I can't say it to speculate. I think that as she became more and more desired by the studios, you know, more and more a profit maker for motion pictures, uh, she became very insecure. It was easier for her to pose for still pictures where she didn't have to talk and she didn't have to walk. I think if she had to walk and talk at the same time, maybe inside she became very confused. You and I were talking, Larry, during the break. She died in 1962. Her fame, you said, began in the 40s. Right. She had something like an 18-year run of fame. Is there a modern-day parallel, and an example we can give to, to, to help us understand how famous was Marilyn Monroe? Well. You know, we don't remember June, Jean Harlow the same way, and she died at a younger age than Marilyn Monroe. You know, you hardly remember Melina Dietrich. Uh, so the great, great actresses of those periods you don't remember. Why do we remember Marilyn Monroe, you know, 50 years later? I believe it's because she never offended a woman. I believe that young girls, you know, they don't mind if they're boyfriends. Women don't mind if their husbands look at the pictures. They themselves see this innocence, this insecurity, Many people say to you know, themselves, if I was there, I could have saved Marilyn Monroe. Mm -hmm. I would have helped her. Larry, I was reading your book before we came. What, what was the story with Robert Kennedy? Well, I mean, I wasn't in the bedroom with him, but I was at the house one day uh, bringing some pictures for her to approve. And I had stopped by a little earlier than I should have. And I'm in the backyard waiting for her, and all of a sudden I see through the window Ed Guthman you know, walk in first, and a minute later, Bobby Kennedy walks in. Oh, Ed Guthman was an aide to Robert Kennedy. Right. right. He was an aide uh, when Bobby was in the Justice Department, and right. he, a Pulitzer Prize-winning writer, as you know. Very uh, And, you know, later on, I would work with Ed Guthman photographing Bobby Kennedy's campaign. But, you know, they just walk out in the backyard waiting for Marilyn, and I'm on the other side of the pool, and, you know, I just kind of walked up, introduced myself. I had ne not met Bobby Kennedy before. And he was in a polo shirt, and we, she comes out on the other side of the pool in a bathing suit, jumps in the water. Kennedy's face kind of lights up, and she starts swimming, you know, towards this side of the pool. And, of course, in my mind, you know, ten days earlier, I'd photographed her coming out of the pool with nothing on. So I said, <laughs> is that what we're going to have? Of course, she came out with her bathing suit. But it, it was just a moment I saw them together, you know. You can't prove a negative. So I don't know really how deep that relationship was. You wrote a lot about um, how she wasn't, the Marilyn that you knew was not the Marilyn that people talk about, that, that she was, um, you know, sort of all the bad stories, the drugs, the loneliness, the, right. you know, that, that you saw something different. Who was the Marilyn that you knew? Well, number one, I saw this tremendously insecure woman who at one point when I was talking to her that my wife and I, Judy, my first wife, we were going to have our second child, and all of a sudden she went almost inside of herself saying, you know, I want to have a baby, but I can't have a baby. My mother was, you know, in a mental hospital. And then I think she said something about her father attempting suicide. Uh, and, you know, she got so much emotional. And then she said, you know, my body rejects the, 
the baby, but I want the baby. And then she snapped out of it, just like a light switch. Uh, I saw those moments, you know, which were very... I also saw the very strong business calculating woman who said, when you publish these pictures, Larry, I don't want to see Elizabeth Taylor on the cover or inside mm -hmm. any of those magazines. I knew that was what was known as a condition of sale. <laughs> You'd be right. All right, the book is Marilyn and Me.